Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's an honor, and I'm also excited to speak about that. I think it's the first time that I have to explain to many people at the same time what I have done and how I reached that, uh, those goals in a certain way. So the title of my presentation is uh, I'm a PhD, so what? Probably most of you are already in the PhD process. It's not something very different in the academic um, profiles, but it's something that always surprised people outside to be, to be claimed as a doctor. And most of the time, people don't really understand what a doctor is and always are uh, asking advice for drugs, medication, and stuff. So we, cannot, we can never answer anyway. So how everything starts. Uh, my name is Olivier Menzel. Uh, the name, unfortunately, doesn't suggest. I'm from the Italian part of Switzerland. And, uh, but as a true guy from the Italian part of Visa, I have Swiss German origin. So I came to Geneva for, to study, and since there, I'm in the, in the French part. But why I came in Geneva, it's quite interesting. So um, when I was young, uh, well, I'm still young, I'm 42, so I'm still young. Um, uh, I had a few passions that were uh, hanging out with friends and, uh, of course, not going to school and just uh, uh, creating relations. I really enjoy uh, discussing with people and looking at people, in fact. Until uh, at when I was 17, I had the chance to do the, at the high school, the Maturité Fédérale, so the Federal Baccalaureate, where uh, for the secondary uh, subject, you have to bring a, a personal uh, work. And really, I have no idea why in biology I choose uh, Mendel, but this was a, a, a revelation. I was fascinated by peas, not really, but more from hereditarity which, uh, uh, in fact, at 17 uh, quite, was quite surprising to me. But this didn't improve in my passion to study. But anyway, uh, when I reached the end of the, of the high school, my mom, my mom asked, so what what we are doing now? Because, uh, you know, high school, at, at that time, there were only one way, which was uh, university. So I said, Oof, uh, okay, I don't like very much uh, study, studying, and the only thing that I really liked was the Mendel law, so that means genetics. Okay, uh, two way, genetic you can be done in biology or in medicine. I realized quite rapidly that, that I didn't want to become a physician or an MD because I, even if I like relationships, I don't like the, uh, the relation with a patient. I, I, I already realized that I was not so strong to uh, discuss with patients, announce bad, uh, bad uh, diseases or whatever, but I wanted to do something to cure people. And for that reason, I, went, uh, I came to Geneva, because at that time it was the hub, uh, at least in Europe, for uh, human genetics. Uh, in fact, uh, I came also for Professor Stiliano Santonakis, that maybe may, uh, a lot of people uh, know. And uh, I was also lucky because it was really before the human genome sequencing uh, project. And uh, at that time, after the baccalaureate and everything, I did my master on human genetics working on chromosome 21, which is uh, when you have three copies of it, it's responsible of um, Down syndrome. And in fact, it's also the chromosome with the uh, highest number of genes. And before to know where the genes are, you have to go and fish them. And how to know that they are on 21 on, on another place, the only way to know it was thanks to families who are carrying uh, rare disease and rare genetic conditions. So thanks to them, we obtain a lot of information where genes are and try to guess how they work. So this was my first uh, confrontation with rare diseases. So then, I finished my master, that at the time was the diploma, or I don't remember what, uh, for two years. And of course, you are not paying during that period. I had the chance to also work part-time on Orphanet, which is a, now is the largest database on, uh, uh, on rare diseases. It's an, a very strong database to inform patients and family of patients uh, how to handle diseases, but also where you can find diagnostic tools, uh, clinical trials, patient organization, and this stuff. It was a French project. The European Commission uh, 
gave some money to try to test it on other countries, which Switzerland was part of it, and now uh, this database exists in, exist in 46 uh, countries. And uh, again, I was confronted to rare diseases, but also at the social level, all the burdens that uh, people living with a rare disease has to, to handle every day with insurance, with administration, with diagnosis, and this kind of stuff. Again, we have similarities. Uh, the only one, I didn't work in that building. I hope that we are going to work in that building with a unique platform on therapeutic discovery focused on rare diseases, but we are not ready yet. So I did my PhD at ISREC because I wanted to discover something else, which was cellular and molecular genetics. I also specialized in gene therapy. And uh, good for me, at that time, uh, they started, in fact, EPFL uh, with Patrick Abisher uh, bought ISREC. And I realized how, how interesting it was to collaborate it with other institutes, but also that I was half paid in comparison with the EPFL PhD students. So this was quite surprising to me. Then, um, in fact, I had my first daughter, uh, really at the same time that uh, I, I, I did my PhD. And I realized that I wanted to uh, spend more time at home so not 16 hours in the lab, but maybe only 10 or 9. And uh, I had the chance that I had six months breaks because I did my uh, service civil, which is when you refuse to do the army. And uh, um, I, I, I said to myself that I have to find a job, uh, a real job <laughs> in the private sector because uh, I didn't want to pursue in the university. And... Um, in fact, uh, I, I just say it, uh, I never uh, had uh, any postulation, whatever, because my wife, in fact, took my CV, put three words on, the, on, the, on, uh, on Google, and she found a position uh, at the University Hospital of Geneva, which was already a meta assistant position, and it was in charge of the uh, surgery pediatric laboratory uh, working on rare metabolic liver diseases, for a very uh, fascinating gene therapy protocol. So, uh, okay, I, I sent my CV. I was also 150% on that, only one, and I succeed. I, I really don't know how, but I probably was very convinced, convincing. And I started a six year journey that was f really fascinating because I was really in the interface with patients, more with families of patients, because patients were very, very young that I have to uh, have a transplantation, a liver transplantation, and the idea was to find a solution in order to avoid uh, liver transplantation, but again, rare diseases. We obtained very good results, thanks also to the Swiss National Foundation uh, that support this project, at least the first part. And when we obtain uh, outstanding results on monkeys, we had the chance to uh, test our protocols on three monkeys, not in Switzerland, but in France, uh, where we could re-express a missing gene for more than 15 months, we submitted a second round. And uh, I have to uh, underline that we were working on a familia hypercholesteremia, which is a, a very severe uh, condition of uh, children that they cannot uh, intake cholesterol. So when they are one year old, they in fact has cardiovascular accident like people of uh, 80 that uh, they spend their life in, at the McDonald's uh, smoking cigarettes. And, um, and we, we, we find something that could be a solution. And, and working on the cholesterol for us was something good because 18% of the world population are suffering of high level of cholesterol. And when we received the Swiss National Foundation, the final sentence was that our project was too ambitious. Of course, there are probably, probably other political reasons, but you know, the Italian genes that I have came out and I call in burn trying to understand what two ambition means because normally you can always you know, discuss about the price, about the amount of money that you need, you can reduce a little bit the, ex the experiment, but normally two ambition should not be a negative point anyway. So I understood that uh, the fact to be, uh, to work on rare diseases, uh, even in Switzerland, even in academic uh, environment where normally it's not linked to commercial uh, vision, uh, was not 
the, the right uh, thing to do, uh, at least to put it in the, in the, in the, in the grant application. But thanks to them, uh, the day after, really the day after, that was in 2009, I decided to create the Black Swan Foundation. The mission of the Black Swan Foundation is to support research on orphan diseases. Orphan diseases are rare diseases as well, but even worse because they are, they, there is no, sorry, no uh, drugs, no physician that have expertise, uh, no network, no patient organization, nothing. They are just, uh, people with a rare and often diseases and see you, uh, we cannot do anything. And I started like a, 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 a startup. In fact, that means with the three F, the family, friends and fools, because unfortunately I didn't have uh, several millions in my pocket to start the foundation. In fact, the, the authority asked me three times if I was sure to start a foundation because they were not used to start a foundation with a so small amount of money in Switzerland at least. And uh, since then, uh, it was a huge uh, adventure. Of course, this was uh, on voluntary basis. I'm not working, uh, I have no salary from the Black Swan Foundation. In parallel, I had few uh, working and board experience. Uh, I just listed few there because they were very fascinating and uh, very useful to, to, to build my vision and my uh, what I think now about uh, a, a good job. Uh, San Offram was very interesting because it was the first time entering a private uh, um, structure. They changed the name now. The idea was to develop drugs for orphan diseases. And uh, I had some managerial, uh, um, um, uh, let's say, skills that uh, I have to invent because uh, unfortunately the university, the, will not offer you uh, management uh, uh, courses, at least from the uh, diploma uh, point of view. But it was very interesting because I realized all the things that I'm missing to work in the private sector. So then I moved to the SIC, which is a structure in Freiburg. Uh, it was a very bad experience because on the paper the project was very, is very good and they still working. So they. Uh, probably they succeed very well, but uh, when you confront it with ego personalities and uh, of also with people that are not smart to uh, recognize that you can bring skills from outside and you think that you have all the skills, it's something that you can never uh, work out. So this is maybe a piece of advice. Don't be afraid to hire or to have people around you that are smarter than you because they are the real strengths. You are, you are good, but they will be better and together it's even better. Then I had some board experience in uh, Association of France Maladie of Lin, where I have more uh, like a scientific review process and Pluraris, which is the Swiss National Alliance to support uh, orphan diseases patients. And it's a more a social uh, approach. So all that part, just to say that I realized that unfortunately all the studies that I have done, they don't offer you some skills that are necessary, at least from the not-for-profit point of view to answer the question of before, but also for the private sector. So I decided to have an executive master of business administration, which was very interesting. I was sure to meet a lot of MDs, nobody. So they think they have already all the skills that they need to succeed. And thanks to that, they, um, they, this master opened me some new perspective. As a biologist, I never thought to work for a group of private clinics. In fact, I could obtain a job thanks to the MEA, probably, or thanks to the, I don't know, luck, uh, chance. And I work as a director for two years. But again, my, my, my goal was uh, at that time uh, to do something more for rare diseases. And the fact that I was uh, asked several times to uh, give expertise, to advise to pharma industry about rare diseases, uh, I did it for six years for free. And once I did it for a pharma company in, in Zurich and they asked me, okay, uh, just send us a bill. A bill? Yeah, but you spend a few days with us, and we discuss about the rare disease, we have to pay you. 
okay. <laughs> so I realized that I cannot obtain the bills of the six last year, but I started from that moment to, <laughs> to send bills for the advice. And this gives me something that is very important you will see in the end, freedom, which is I can really choose on what to work and I can really continue my passion, which are uh, rare diseases through the Blackstone Foundation. Uh, again, uh, I really like to discuss, to network with people. I really hate uh, do reports, so I probably not, I will not finish in uh, the think rare as a consultant. And for that reason, I'm still saying to my children that when I grow up, I will do something else for sure. So never be focused on what you are doing. Be free to choose and to change. Freedom is really probably the only piece of advice that I can give you. Give you. Uh, to be free means that you are not afraid of anything. You can do whatever you want. You can change at any time. Uh, you are not uh, submitted to any, any, anyone. Uh, freedom probably is it's really the only way to uh, reach your goal. And really, I finish with our last uh, law, which is the law of, of attraction. There are many books on that, but the only thing that you have to know, if, it's re if you really want to have something, just focus on that, no matter uh, how, but you will get it. And uh, I will also give you another one. Failure, it's, it's very good because they, it's the only moment that you learn something. And when you learn something, uh, you have a, you know, a, a, piece, a, a piece of uh, your experience that increase just to reach your goal. And they, what they say, always have a plan B. I don't think it's important to have a plan B if you know where you have to, wh wh where you want to go. So thank you for your attention.